We're going to discuss a topic that many in the trading world often seek. The best indicator that promises millions in profits. But here's the truth. I'll let you in on a secret. There isn't a single indicator that will magically make you millions in trading. What truly matters is understanding how to read the tape and interpret price action. So let's dive into why mastering these skills is the real key to success in trading. Now there's an illusion of holy grail indicators. The ones that claim to predict market movements and guarantee massive profits. Let's understand what indicators even are. Indicators such as moving averages, RSI, MACD, and others have their value in analyzing market data. However, relying solely on these indicators without considering other factors is a common mistake. No single indicator is foolproof. Markets are complex, influenced by numerous factors like news sentiment and institutional trading. Relying solely on an indicator can lead to false signals and losses. Don't get me wrong, indicators can be helpful tools, but they are not the ultimate solution for consistent profitability. So if indicators aren't the magical solution, what truly matters in trading? It's understanding how to read the tape and interpret price action, a skill that separates successful traders from the rest. Reading the tape involves observing the actual trades, volume, and order flow in real time. It provides insights into market dynamics, buyer-seller interactions, and potential market direction. Price action analysis focuses on studying price movements, patterns, and candlestick formations. It helps traders anticipate market reversals, breakouts, and trend continuations. By mastering tape reading and price action, traders gain a deeper understanding of market behavior, enabling them to make informed decisions. So without going into too much detail, I'll show you guys what I have on my current Thinkorswim charts. So I use Thinkorswim for my charts and I use Interactive to execute. So when it comes down to trading, I have a very simple chart. No studies, no indicators. Yes, you may see some arrows, but that's my own algo. So let's go ahead and get started on what do I actually look at when I'm trading. I, first thing I start with is times and sales. So times and sales shows me all the buying and selling going on. Right now, the green and red that pops up, obviously the market is closed here, but when you see green and red, it means certain things. When you see green, that means there's buying and selling going on at the ask, and when you see red, that means you see buying and selling at the bid. So that's what I use times and sale for. I also use it to filter sizes, see if I can find any big orders, which you can customize to your liking to specific numbers, or you can have the standard here, which is 200, 500. Usually for most stocks or all of the stocks, really, I have a uh, show greater than or equal to 200. Now with stocks with uh, you know a smaller price and higher volume, I'll have 500 on for SPY. But if I'm trading NVIDIA or Tesla, it'll be 200. The next thing that I'm watching is level two. I wanna see what's going on on the walls. I wanna see where we're lining up on the buying and selling and how much pressure is the buying being, or, or the selling being brought to the buying or the buying being brought to the selling. So that's where you take a look at level two. You see if the buyers are coming up to the ask or is the ask coming down to the buyer. So if you're watching the downside or if I'm watching the downside, I'm watching to see the ask come down to the bid. So you have to compare it to real life scenarios. And how do you compare this to real life scenarios? Let's just say you have a iPod listed on eBay, right? And you have it listed for $700 or best offer. Now, someone comes in with an offer of $400. If you're not in a rush to sell and you don't feel obligated to sell and you're, you're, you don't think that the iPod is gonna lose value in the next month or two, what are you gonna do? Keep your price at 700 or even meet him down at 600, for example. Now, if the seller really needs this money or feels like this iPod is gonna lose value very, very quickly, he's gonna drop his price and meet the buyer at 400. And that's when you see the ask come down to the buyer. So that's how you visualize that. Now, if you see the ask stay the same and the buyer come up to the ask, for example, if the iPod's listed at 700 and the next best offer would come in at 650, that means there's far more buying pressure than selling pressure because the sell number has not changed. And that's what we're looking at on level two. Now, the next thing I'm looking at is volume. Now, I wanna see what's going on on the volume, especially if we're coming into certain resistance and you know certain support lines. For example, here, you can just zoom in here on the one minute. You can see volume on any candle or any time frame, right? For example, you could see this volume candle right here. This is a very big spike. And then I can see the volume down here. So in this candle, I see that there was 895,000 on this one minute chart. Anywhere here, you can see all the different volumes going on. So 
536,000 to 661,000. So what am I looking at with volume? With volume, I'm trying to see if buyers or sellers are picking up in the area that I wanted to. So if I'm looking at a certain area for you know a breakout, and volume doesn't come in, I'm looking at something wrong, right? Just because I'm looking at something and it breaks through, that doesn't mean I was looking at the right thing. So I use volume to confirm that. So these are the three most important components. Then obviously you have price action. What's going on in the chart? Is consolidation going on? Do we have an uptrend? Do we have a downtrend? Is the uptrend breaking, support and resistance lines, supply and demand zones? So that's price action, right? Without any indicators, I could see exactly what's going on behind these screens, rather than just looking at a bunch of candlesticks and putting RSI and MACD to try to help me buy and sell. Developing proficiency in reading tape and understanding price action requires dedication, practice, and continuous learning. For one, educate yourself. Dive into educational resources such as books, courses, webinars, and real-time market analysis. Understand market psychology and various trading strategies. Hands-on experience even with paper trading. You need practice and patience. Apply your knowledge by practicing with paper trading or small positions. Patience is crucial as mastery takes time and experience. Remember, there's no shortcut to success in trading. It's about building skills, honing your craft, and learning from both successes and failures. While the allure of million dollar indicator is tempting, the truth is success in trading comes from understanding how to read the tape and interpret price action. And trust me, after interning on Wall Street and trading for eight years now, I think I would have found the indicator if there was one. These skills require dedication, continuous learning, and experience.